Mark, uh, there's two greats of sport past uh, in the last 24 hours. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, obviously Marvin Hagler uh, last night that we that we learned had gone. And yeah. uh, do you know what's interesting about that period? And you'll know this, John, as a as, as a boxer yourself. It's often said of the boxing world that it needs the heavyweights to be great yes. for boxing to have its relevance to be to be followed to be to be at the top of its game. That period in the eighties when it was sensational, Marvin Hagler, oh. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Thomas Durant. the Hitman yeah. Ernst, and Roberto Duran, all who fought each other, and uh, and I've got to say, I, I, and I, you know, I know that this may sound sort of somewhat facile in hindsight, but. Hagler was always my favourite of the lot. It's, which is really interesting yeah. because I'd say of the four, in the sense that uh, obviously Roberto Duran had the passion of the, of the Latin yeah. audience. Uh, the hitman was Detroit, wasn't he? He was, and he and, and but kind of his look, long get, yes. looked different. Looked different. Was my <laughs> personal favourite. And then you had Leonard, who was the golden boy. Hagler was was almost, to use an 80s expression, the arsenal of the bunch. It is true. It was a very specific choice if you yeah. picked uh, Marvin Hagler. And I love that. I got so many people that have said to me, you know, I love. But and the way he fought was sensational. Yeah. I mean, he was. I'd use a football analogy so that people can understand it a bit more. All cricket. He was an all rounder. So he was yeah. a fighter yeah. boxer. They yeah. call it. So I, I would describe him. He was a bit like Zinedine Zidane. Mm. He could do a bit of everything. Yeah. He was brilliant going forward. He could get your goals, and he could be, and he could tackle and track back. Hagler had everything in his prime. He was a sensational boxer fighter. And and, and this is my favorite thing about Marvin Hagler, which he, he famously was certainly never knocked knocked down. No. Or out. Sorry. Or stopped. The one time he went down. He said I was pushed. Yeah. So the one exactly time his whole career was having nowhere. <laughs> so he was a spectacularly. I mean, he had probably the, the with Ali, you'd say the, the greatest jaw they said in the history of boxing. But also he could punch. And what he would do when he would fight, he was it was a very specific fighter. He would stand in the middle of the ring and he would do what you call cut you off. Mm. So he used he used the ring space sparingly, and you danced around yeah. him as Leonard did in, in, the, in their famous fight, which I watched again recently. And, and if ever a fight was a draw for me, that was it. Yeah. You know, it was, it, but what he did was he cut, uh, cut away with you cut away at you but there were so many points in his career mark where he was amazing obviously there was the the night in Al, against Alan Minter where he took the title on disgraceful scenes oh it was horrible it was, I mean yeah. it, was, it was set how up how tough he was to go in yeah. there you know and do that in, in, a, in, a, in a in a hostile environment and to show what, what a man he was it, it was kind of like him in his pomp in that yes. sense because what you then got is the that there was a kind of ruthlessness about him a serene ruthlessness about oh, him he was a quiet yet damaging man and yes. he carried that through afterwards as well this is the thing that impressed me and you know he was this kind of very quiet figure went into co-commentaries as well was very good at it always immaculately turned out double-breasted suit but never overt never demonstrative just always get the job done kind of guy he's always voted in in the top 20 greatest boxers ever certainly voted, voted in the top five middleweight boxers ever so you've got the great uh, Sugar Ray Robson and then people like that Tony Zale he had the title for, I think for the second longest time a bit like you were saying after he finished he became even more popular yeah. I love the fact that he moved to Italy for an acting career Yes. and then when he came over here as a com commentator me like lots of others really liked him he was a nice guy he was a gentleman he was a brilliant second voice he spoke about the, the, the game the, the, he's once famous he had, if, you, if you cut my bald head Open, there'd be a boxing glove inside <laughs> <laughs> which is a great way of describing yeah. how much he loved the sport and he spoke about it in, in a brilliant way his last fight was the was the fight against the great Sugar Ray Leonard, Leonard uh, yeah. a fight which was is even now is still contentious I, I watched it again recently I remember the time thinking that Leonard just edged it uh, the great Hugh McElvaney came out on support of Hagler when I watched it back I did think that McElvaney had a point Leonard would throw lots of flurries but the quality of punches landed was Hagler. So st and classic mix of styles. Yes, absolutely. The way that boxing is that that's the massively subjective nature of boxing. Often, isn't it? It's yes. a conflict of styles where Leonard would give the impression that he was dominating. Yes, in practical terms, yes. Hagler had exactly kind of had him where he won. This is not to demean Sugar Ray Leonard's no, boxing. No, I mean this good is Lord. one of the greats. One of the greats. Well, and that's the thing the, the, with the greats, they prove it against other greats. Quite that's right. what I love. And then and you're right at the top of the show. Quite right, Roberto Duran. Thomas Hearns, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler were all around the same and didn't avoid each other. Now let's come, let's go on to probably the, the, certainly the greatest opening round in the history of boxing. I'm really one of the great fights. This is this is when he fought Tommy the Hitman Hearns, who was my personal favourite. But Hagler that fight and what was incredible. I would listen to it on radio in the early hours. Yeah. My grandfather woke me up and I can't remember like sort of being half sleepy. And I listened to this that came from another continent, this static sort of and and, and the comment this is where radio is so good with sport. Mm. It sounded incredible. My grandfather kept whistling 
because he was going left, right, from he can, he left, can right, see right, what's happening. Haggis going he? around, and his cat, his cat, and, it's, and you're thinking, God, everything's going on. This, yeah. film, everything's going on. I think somebody said, somebody said something like that. In the first 15 seconds, something like 30 punches. The were punches thrown. Were thrown. It was thrown. astonishing. But the great thing about that fight was this: in the third. Hagler famously gets cut, and he's not sure how. They, they think they're going to clash of heads. And the doctor looks at it for 15 seconds. And when you listen on the radio, they're going, they're going to stop the fight. Mm. They're going to stop the fight. And I'm thinking, Hearns is one year. And they allow it to carry on. And Hagler famously says, I knew I had to stop him in yeah. the next 20 seconds. And he did. He stopped him. Well, they both came out of the corners like oh. I assumed it wasn't going to last very yes. long, didn't they? <laughs> Which, and, but, so you get that one round, arguably the, oh. the most famous round in boxing ever. If you ever, can watch he, it, well, go on yeah. YouTube after this and watch it. You, watch you only that need round. three minutes of your life. That's all it takes. Yes. It's incredible. Yes. But, of course, then you have to remember that he goes back he, 15 rounds against Roberto Duran. Yeah. Now, that you're, you are fighting the, the fists of rock oh. there in that one there. A man who will not also. It, it was classic immovable force and, you know, static Incredible object fight. stuff. But that goes on for the entire duration of the fight. So it just goes to show he had everything in his locker. It, it, it was he was an incredible man to watch. And I would not pretend to say that I know that he's better than that other, uh, the best one of that quartet. It, you just pick a favourite. I don't oh, think you say it, who's the, best. I, I totally agree. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, and, and what's great about it is the, the variety of styles. He was a southpaw. So he would fight in a very but specific way. he could switch way. as well, And he could he? switch. Well, so this is the big debate. For some reason, he comes out orthodox against Leonard in the first yeah. two rounds and loses the first two rounds yeah. by quite a distance. And that's what set the tone of the fight. When he switched back to, to Southpaw, he was very much on the front foot again. And people often wonder why he made that decision. I wonder decision. if his trainers said, I've got the game plan here. Yes. And he tries it for two rounds and said, nope. Nope. Well, what, I, what, I, what I think most boxing fans would say... A 25-year-old Hagler against a 25-year-old Leonard, because of the weight difference, because Leonard was probably a natural welter, yeah, and he was a so. natural I think Hagler would have been too strong for him. And that period where he dominated uh, the, Brit the, the the middleweight division, yeah. it seemed like he'd be uh, the champion forever. He was a bit like Ed Moses in athletics, where you just, or he'll just win. He'll just win. Or even in that, it, basically what Tyson was yes. later on, the yes. sense that anyone who dared bother even going in, in the ring with him yes. is going to come unstuck. And there was a period of time where he was indomitable, wasn't there? Well, the, the wonderful thing, we're going we're gonna to take a break soon, and we are going to talk to uh, Johnny Herbert later about the brilliant Murray Walker. Yes, absolutely. Quite, quite right. But too, what I love about it, and what I'll leave you with is this. Uh, the great, uh, marvellous Marvin Hagler passed last night, and he changed his name by deed to Marvellous. Quite right. And nobody said a word. <laughs> Stay with us.